the biggest phylum of fungi is the ascomycota. And the ascomycota are your sac fungi, so called because the structure, the microscopic structure that produces the spores, is called an ascus. Means sac, and if we have multiple assi, that's what we call them. We call them assi in the plural. And an ascus looks kind of like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so there's your basic ascus. And these eight little jobbies in here are your ascospores. So these are the spores that are produced through uh, sex, so through meiosis, uh, through uh, plasmogamy, karyogamy, and meiosis to produce our ascospores and mitosis. But that's that's uh, that'll come along later. So let's take one of these ascospores and germinate it. What do we get? Just like we'll see in the basidiomycetes, we have a septate monokaryotic hypha. So it's septate because there are cross walls between the nuclei, so each uh, one of these little chambers here is a cell with one nucleus, very different from we, what we saw in the zygomycota and the chytridiomycota and the glomeromycota. Uh, but this septate monokaryotic hypha uh, will grow just like this, and it might even produce many of a diverse number of kinds of conidiophores. which produce conidia. And conidia, remember, are asexual spores. So they're produced by mitosis. And many ascomycetes that produce conidia uh, produce just scads and scads and scads, millions and billions of conidia. They're pretty cheap to produce, don't require a lot of energy to produce. So they produce a lot of them. Uh, and like in the Basidiomycota, we can have a delay between uh, the two parts of fertilization or syngamy. So we can have plasmogamy coming first and then karyogamy. So we've got a monokaryotic hypha here, we've got another monokaryotic hypha here. They're different mating types. Uh, and they can actually produce gamete-like structure, uh, gametangia, or what they're called. There's one gametangium. Let's say this one is an antheridium, just like in plants. And can produce this structure called a trichome to donate nuclei 
to this structure here, which is now called an ascogonium. So the nuclei migrate. And we end up with a dikaryotic hypha. So it's got two nuclei. That's plasmogamy. So we've got two nuclei in this cell, and they haven't fused yet, so we haven't gone through karyogamy or cell uh, nucleus, nuclear fusion. This dikaryotic hypha can grow and divide into a structure called an ascocarp. And an ascocarp is very similar to a basidiocarp that forms a mushroom, uh, only instead of producing basidia, it produces acai. So this is typically made up of dikaryotic hyphae. And then, in the base of this cup-shaped structure down here of this ascocarp. This ascocarp is cup-shaped. Um, we've got all these little structures that are going to become the assi. What happens in the ascus is you have a dikaryotic ascus and those two nuclei will fuse so there's karyogamy which leads to us having a zygote That zygote will immediately undergo meiosis. Followed by one round of mitosis. Which gives us eight haploid ascospores. So that's how we end up having eight asco ha 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 haploid ascospores is by having meiosis to give us four cells plus one round of mitosis to give us our eight haploid ascospores and we end up back at the start again where our ascospores may germinate to form a septate monokaryotic hypha and so on and so forth to get us back to the beginning of our life cycle.